You either know where this is going or not. Downs a stolen bottle of $7 brandy. And I was like, come on. If you don't know who Corey Matthews is, you are clearly not somebody that grew up watching TV. Lots of it. Boy Meets World. Now, what is it, Girl Meets World? Yeah. So that is a TV show, and he's written a series of short stories about Corey Matthews if he lived in an evil universe, which is great. <laughs> right? So you can imagine me sitting at my house reading this like, I do not know if this kid is dicking with me or if this is like for real. So of course, once he was like, no, no, this is awesome. I'm like, yes, then you are doing it. So James Figge, um, after a few, uh, few years after high school, spent working construction, playing music, and being fairly unhappy. Um, being unhappy is a prerequisite, of course, for being a writer. Yes, like, <laughs> sounds in the back. He started writing and decided he wanted to go to college and study poetry, because that makes you happy. Fiction and journalism. Uh, in May, he graduated from the University of Indianapolis. He currently writes for Angie's List magazine, two local newspapers as a freelancer, and for his own enjoyment, which is weird. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at J.A. Figgy. James. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So, Corey Matthews. <laughs> he took a second gulp of the cheap brandy and he let it sit right on the back of his throat for a little while. It burned kind of like paint thinner stripping a wall. And uh, he stood on the deck of the porch at the house that his parents used to own, but had it for a long time. Now it was boarded up and coated in graffiti. And Frankie was there too. You guys know Frankie? He's a big guy and, and he was kind of nervous, so he backed up and knocked over this flower pot and he looks down at all these weeds just sad there on the ground and he says, oh you gentle flowers, your, your hearts are love, so loving. Corey looks at him and goes, what have I told you about that poetic bullshit? <laughs> Corey looks at him again and says, go back to the shed and get the gas can. That's where my dad used to keep it. He looks over at Feeney's house. <laughs> and uh, Frankie goes, well, how do you know it's still back there? Corey's like, well, where else would it be? The pantry? Frankie just shrugs. I don't know, maybe. He's like, well, I guess you're a philosopher now, too. Go get the gas. So Frankie ambles off reluctantly. He comes back for a second. He goes, you know, I knew this would happen when you stole that. I know how you get these days. You just had to go see her, didn't you? You had to go to the gas station where she's worked for two months. You know that. You've seen Topanga there before. <laughs> I told you this would happen. I told you. You would knock over things and, and yell, and, and then you stole that alcohol. It's like, after you left, I saw her call the cops, and it's not like she can't. Then, he finally went and got to, to get the gas. Corey walked over to the fence between the, his parents' house and Feeney's house and he looked up at it and said, you know, Feeney, you are the worst teacher ever. <laughs> <laughs> Use my head, right? Use my head, that's what you used to always tell me. Well, that doesn't work so well when you've got shit for brains. <laughs> Would I be in trouble with the IRS if I didn't get creative using my head to try to save my dad's store? Or, or would I be paying ridiculous amounts of child support if I didn't use my head and think about family and love and all that nonsense? He's like, I'm done using my head. Frankie comes back with the, uh, the gas can. He goes, you know, I was thinking about that Sean guy, you know, leather coat and hair and trailer park. Um, whatever happened to him? And Corey's like, he grabs the gas can. He's like, I stopped talking to that asshole years ago. He went off to college and he got some MFA diploma. Now he thinks he's too good for everybody else. <laughs> What's MFA even stand for? Like, uh, mother fucking asshole or something. <laughs> and so he jumps over the fence and he starts sloshing gas all over Feeney's house, just on the siding and the window sills and the flower beds, and he takes a cigarette out and lights it, and, and he takes a drag, and then he tosses it at the gas, and 
Of course, nothing happens because that's like something out of bad fiction. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he realizes then, he realizes that if he's going to beat the old man at his game, he's going to have to not use his head. So he takes the lighter and he leans down and, and he goes, I'm going to beat you, but I'm going to have to beat myself. He, Frankie's like, no man, don't do it, don't do it. And Corey, Corey, he just already sees himself burning in his own mind, you know, incinerating into the ground and ashes and meet earth. Boy, meets world. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts clicking the light. And Frankie goes, there'll be nothing left of you. And Corey turns his head and looks at Frankie and goes, there's nothing now. <laughs> Eight. Everybody seems very passive about the judges. Seven. <laughs> the Russian judge gives a seven. <laughs> Six. Brutal. That's terrible. 